the fundamental of Dune 2 is still slow, but the moments that are fast and beautiful are just, they just completely outweigh like the slow pacing of the movie itself. I didn't think it was slow at all. I think Dune 2 had phenomenal pacing, like phenomenal pacing. So you brought up Dune when talking about Star Wars. Are you aware that like Star Wars was obviously heavily influenced by Frank Herbert's? No, 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 totally, Dune? totally, totally. Yeah, okay. It's just I don't know. I, I hadn't been blown away by a movie in so Dude, long. I know. Like you know, do you, do you, do you watch uh, Lord of the Rings back then? Uh, yeah. When I was growing up, Lord of the Rings for me was monumental, and I feel like that is the younger Nerd. generation's Lord of the Rings, and. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I sci-fi is less prominent or less of a, you know, optimal for me. But the, the, the character development, some of the shots were just so gorgeous. Coming from, like, dude, making music incredible. videos. And I was like, dude, like, the, the attention to detail is absolutely f So, I'm a huge fan of Dune now. I was not that big of a fan after Dune 1, but Dune 2, big dick swinging. Yeah. Herbert was apparently kind of peeved about it. It's true. He made a quip in a later book about a cheap knockoff being called 3PO. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So George Lucas actually says that, like, of course he was influenced by it, but he said that it was, like, not all that influenced or whatever. Yeah. Which, to me, I feel like there's a little bit of honesty there, too, because I think that the Star Wars plot, the Star Wars universe is vast and phenomenal, but, like, the mainline plot is kind of mid. I've always maintained the position that, like, I think Knights of the Old Republic or other genres that are offshoots of, like, the main star wars hero story yeah is infinitely better than the actual star wars the original star yeah, wars kind of right i never even thought about it that way i so, kind of agree i do feel like star wars never also had any acting i felt like most of the roles were pretty believable in dune i will say like you know the two main actors they're just like beautiful people kind of thing I don't know how well they did in my eyes, but everyone else was, you know, well dressed and it made sense. Well, here is Denis Villeneuve, director of Dune hey, Part Two. I'm Denis Villeneuve, director of Dune Part Two, and do this Dune is one? Note on yeah. a Scene. Zimmer, f yeah, he put he's his the dick. Best. He's he the put best. his dick all over this project, dude. And I was like, "Damn, dude, give me more, please." Yeah, it's, it's it's like one of them video games when you're like so engulfed into the actual game, and then you just hear these sounds, and they're so nostalgic. You play it ten years later, ah, oh, dude, dude. He he Van fucking Zimmerman. zimmered all over my Hans. Is a very very iconic you know how i know that scene is so good that i wanted to continue and when it cut back to denny i was like i wish we could watch it again in yeah. the novel it's just the music man Bola 3ds will yeah, finally become crazy. a fremen being fully accepted by the tribe by riding a sandworm for the very first time riding sandworm is something that is part of the fremen tradition is something that usually you read the book fremen learn at the uh, i read the age. first one it's a, one of the scene where through, i tried and then as close enough time to as possible Fair enough. to I have not. the actual dialogue of the novel you're brave we all know that be simple be direct nothing fancy Nothing fancy. I like in that uh, that dialogue the fact that uh, we like feel walking is strongly awesome that Stilgar became some kind of surrogate father to Paul. That uh, Stilgar was like a part of a, the healing process of Paul. Hey, I'm serious. You should watch Incendies. is a film also by Villeneuve about the war in Lebanon and Israel's involvement. Wait, really? Mm, that sounds Damn. really good. Yeah, I found out that you're you have an uncle from Beirut who gave you a copy, your first ever <laughs> copy of Diablo 2, because of the Nardwar interview that you posted on TikTok. I didn't know you had a Lebanese family. Yeah. My my dad is Egyptian Armenian and uh yeah, you mother can't catch a break across the board <laughs> the whole family. Yeah, I know. Eh? <laughs> uh so we yeah, we have family out there. Um my dad's mom's side is primarily still based out there. But yeah, Leon, which is my middle name. He ended up hooking me up with D2 super early on. And uh, 
Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a bunch of kids and they're really cute and they love singing la 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 to me. <laughs> Does anyone have Austin's Lebanese beauty song that we have to show this Lebanese man, this Armenian Lebanese man? Play it. We have to, dude, please tell me. <laughs> oh no, you raised your eyebrows. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's so bad. Austin show cooked it up. RIP Doom video? No, no, no. We'll get back to the Doom video. Don't worry. We'll watch this video. <laughs> Lebanese beauty, inshallah. How will we find it? Did you find it? Oh, here. This was Austin's song. Lebanese woman, such a breathtaking view. Their beauty beyond <laughs> any speech. Oh, yeah. Talk more. <laughs> inshallah, their beauty shines so bright. Stop. <laughs> Not all of them are good, okay? Also, um, he thought inshallah was mashallah. Oh, no. So that's why he says, you know, God willing Lebanese beauty instead of like, wow, it's like, congratulations to Lebanese women for being beautiful. <laughs> Uh, it's yeah, it's bad. Okay, or <laughs> that's I just wanted to briefly yes, show you nothing that. Nothing fancier. You will shame my teacher. I want shame music. I understand. Shai Hulu decides today if you become Fremen <coughs> or if you die. <laughs> There's something that I thing. absolutely love about filmmaking is things that you write, but then the actors bring something uh, even uh, better than I, I was expecting, which is I was looking for that kind of warmth, feeling a bit of humor coming from Stilgar, but the way Timothée reacts to the line makes the scene even better for me. And so the way Timothée uh, becomes a straight man, and the way Stilgar introduces the ways of the desert to Paul, there's something about the humor that is conveyed. I thought that Timothée brought some kind of touch of humor that, that I was like really pleased by. <laughs> <laughs> Check up, sir. In part one, we were introduced this to the Fremen language. There was a bit of it at the end of the movie. But in part two, the character Real? Paul Atreides and his mother Jessica oh, immersed yeah. themselves in the Fremen culture. It was very important for me that there will be a prominent use of Chakopsa, the Fremen Being language. Away. And David Peterson, <laughs> linguist, behind the design of the language in the part one, made a tremendous amount of work to bring uh, this uh, dialogue uh, to the screen. It's a dialogue that is based on what the hints the of what we have in the book, like nine months, but there right? was a, a substantial... Uh, I don't know, but I do know that it was like significantly cheaper than an MCU movie, like half the price. Yeah. I think it was $190 million about that. overall cost. Like no, it billion. wasn't. Yeah, no, it was $190 million was the cost. Whereas like the end game was like, end game was like three times the cost of this. So stupid. I mean, you know that movie that those uh, Australian twins, I can't remember their names right now. They made the talk to me. That shit was five million budget, and it cleared like three hundred million in first week. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I think those guys are geniuses. Yet, yeah. oh wait, what Endgame Marvel peak above three hundred million? The Marvels cost like three hundred twenty-five million. Someone said the Flash was like three hundred million. Someone was talking about how the Secret Invasion was a three hundred million dollar project. This, it was a, a Secret Invasion. What is that, bro? Secret Invasion is actually such a cool plot line too, and they completely boofed it. They it up so hard it was a tv show that uh disney made it was so bad uh, i mean i, I will say created all of them are pretty a, dog shit except for like endgame madam and... web <laughs> i did not see that <laughs> I, I heard a lot of things about it yeah, you like it and you're embarrassed to admit it it's fine <laughs> the movie <laughs> <laughs> Suela Jakub is an actress that I was very excited to work with. I love actor that feels free in front of the camera, where I feel that there is no limit. Shishakli in the novel is a young man, but uh, I wanted to increase femininity in the Fremen tribe. Why? Because Frank Herbert insists in his novel to say that there's an equity between men and women, that the women are as good fighters as men and that the, the, the responsibility in the tribes are uh, equality shared. But the novel, it, it is expressed, but doesn't show that. <laughs> When the first novel came out, Frank Herbert was disappointed the way the book has been perceived. It's so funny because Frank Herbert, 
I think he was like an RNC speechwriter, right? He's like a right wing speechwriter, libertarian, old school libertarian guy. And <laughs> Frank Herbert, too bad he was homophobic to his own son. Yeah, except have you seen his son's uh, writings? <laughs> but uh, he he published the book. <laughs> he published. He he tried to get the book published, and no one wanted. Uh, no one wanted to publish it. Interesting. Why? No, not that son. Oh, that's a different son. My bad. No one wanted to publish it. So like a like a auto manual guide distributor published it. Yeah. And I think that like it, when it took it, a when while it for it to traction? reach like critical acclaim mm, as well. Sense. Felt that the reader were thinking that well, Dune was culty, a celebration right, so. of uh, of Paul Atreides, but uh, and uh, right the opposite. Uh, his intention were to make a cautionary tale, a warning toward messianic figures. And in order to correct that uh, this perception of the first book, he wrote another book, Dune Messiah. Like it's almost like a tiny book, like a April. <laughs> New Lines magazine. Frank Herbert, the Republican Salafist, the author of Dune, articulated his conservative politics not against but through his engagement with non-Western cultures. Okay, this obviously is like a, a little bit ridiculous of a read because overall, Dune in and of itself is like way more. It was motherboard, not an auto mag. Wait, what? No, I thought it was like a mechanics guide. I mean, my first take was I feel like it kind of. Put a lot of people on to like the beauty of Islam. Yeah, right. He, he was mean, a, he was a uh, Islamaboo for sure. American science fiction author for uh, novel, early life, born in Tacoma, Washington. Upbringing included spending a lot of time in rural Olympic. He was fascinated by books, read much of the newspaper. Uh, he enrolled in high school, Salem, early career, uh, reading science fiction. Have you seen the new movie, or the, I mean the old movie? Which one? The like, Lynch one? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, yeah, I never watched it. I heard it's really slow, but it is. No, I think I think it's like it became a cult classic, but Lynch hates it. Like he he openly he openly changed his name, used like a a, a different pen name in other like releases and more modern releases. Mm. He's like distanced himself. He used to hate for a period. He used to hate when people brought it up. Um, it's a cult he, classic. I mean, he says people. that like uh, he 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 says that like despite the fact that it's like in a in a more recent interview they asked him about it and they were like, well, what do you think about like it being a cult classic, regardless of the fact that you've like distanced yourself very publicly from this work? And he said that it was like very important for him to understand that like he will never ever give up Final Cut uh, privileges ever again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's all in the editing for sure. But it, it, it's interesting, too, because I still think the fundamental of Dune 2 is still slow. But the moments that are fast and beautiful are just, they just completely outweigh, like, the slow pacing of the movie itself. I didn't think it was slow at all. Dune 2, Dune 1, you could say that about, but, like, Dune 2 was, like, wall to wall, dude. I, I was... I watched it in 4DX, and that shit was crazy, man. Wait, you, what do you mean? Like, Wait. the shaking chairs? No, okay. It was so heavy, man. That's, in that's insane. <laughs> I think Dune 2 had phenomenal pacing, like phenomenal pacing. Maybe I just like the the source material too much. I mean, my favorite shot was literally a B-roll shot of when they were, I don't know, spoilers, but when they were fighting in the arena, there's like a quick, oh. there's like one quick shot of just literally a millisecond of, I don't know who it was, but someone fully painted white. It was just one second. And I was like, that shot, if I were to have shot that as a music video, that would have been $10,000. And I'm like, F these people, they're so good at their job. It's ridiculous. Like, every single shot was so cinematic. I like, oh, it was gorgeous. It's an art piece in the grayscale. All right, let's get back to the video. Where we understand what Paul really means to Frank Herbert, what I did is that I transformed Shani's character. I made her more prominent in the book, Shani kind of disappear, dissolve into the shadow of Paul. She's in the background. She's a believer. She's not, there's nothing special apart from that she's a, a Paul a lover. There was a strong opportunity there, a character that could help me to have a distance, a critical distance with Paul Atreides. I love witness people that are listening in corners or that you can just feel their presence without dialogue and understand what they are going through. And Zendaya is incredibly expressive with her eyes. And she brought that strength 
to the character that was required. I wanted uh, uh, to see and earn the power of the youth and someone that wants to transform her world, that she do doesn't believe in the old ways of seeing the world. And she's uh, a free character. Through her eyes, we understand what Paul becomes and in which direction he goes and which transformed the movie, not into a celebration, but as uh, 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 Frank Herbert was wishing, more of a warning with a shot like you that. Think he's a when actor. I was drawing storyboards sometimes. Javier Bardem? No, 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 uh, Timmy. I don't really care about Timothy Charlemagne. I mean, he's fine, <laughs> I think. I, I don't really know. I, I mean, he's... I don't... I've never seen him in, like, something that requires, like, tremendous <laughs> acting, so I can't speak on it. There's like, supposedly... I've never seen, like, Call Me By Your Name or some shit. Yeah, you know that I mean? movie. I've heard that movie's incredible. Like, yeah. Unbelievable, but I, I haven't seen it. Charlemagne, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. I, I, maybe that would change my assessment overall, but, like... Yeah, how was he in Wonka? Did you watch Wonka? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've never even seen the original Willy Wonka, though. Like, I, I don't know anything about Willy Wonka. I just know he has a chocolate factory, and there's, like, a fat kid who likes chocolate. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's it's a really good movie. I mean, you know why? Why? Johnny Depp. Oh. <laughs> is, oh, Johnny Depp is Willy Wonka? Yeah, I didn't does, even he, know that. He does one, and then the other guys, I don't know what the other guys. You don't think Dune movies require a tremendous amount of acting? I mean, I think Timothy's role in it is definitely... Like, I think that there are other... There are people who outact him in every corner in that movie. Like he is supposed to be the main character, and I think like Gene Wilder. I think that. Oh my God! Everyone has so many opinions about Gene Wilder <laughs> over John uh, or, or Johnny Depp. Jesus Christ! He was top three in the movie. You're crazy. Everybody, shut the fuck up about Willy Wonka <laughs> and Gene Wilder. I don't give a. F Okay, you should be caring about the top of the hour ad break that's coming for you right now, bitches. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think the acting is that important in that movie. I think the the plot, the set design, yeah, the costuming, the costuming is like crazy acting in that acting movie. Acting in that movie is like maybe the fourth most important thing. Yeah, it's like putting lettuce on a sandwich. It's like you don't need it. But it it's adds good. to it. It adds to the flavor. But like and the, the costuming and then the plot and the, the set decking is that's the bun. Then we can put the meat in the bun. I'm with Simon Dickey. We're just doing a line with a tiny dot. It's just like there's something about the purity. And uh, it's probably linked with my, my childhood where I was raised with an horizon with nothing around. But it's like there's something uh, here about yeah, bringing so back the human here. as its right scale oh, yeah. in the landscape, like an ant in contact with the immensity, with the, the meditative impact of the desert I, that I think is very powerful. There's something here, to be honest, that it, it, uh, was inspired by Jaws, the idea that what you don't see is more frightening. It's knowing that there's something underneath that might come soon. It's a lesson that I learned a long time ago from Spielberg. So it the does. idea here is it's pretty simple. A Fremen, in order to jump, to ride a worm, will put a thumper at the lower, lower side of the dune, stand on top and wait for the worm to catch and get like that and, and, and will eventually jump. But of course, it's the first time that Paul is riding a sandworm. So I had to find the right equilibrium, the right balance to show his skills. And in the same time, how difficult it is and how he risks his life. Having been in this desert in part one, I knew that there was those kinds of crater in the, between sand dunes, those kind of vast, flat space. And uh, I thought that uh, a Fremen will use that flat space in order to be able to calculate the trajectory of the sand dunes. I was pleased to find the right one with the right sun position because we didn't use any artificial light in the desert shooting uh, part two, like we did in part one. It's like a, it's a, it brings a level of eye realism and, and a feeling of a, a strong tactile sensation that you feel with the nature that I was looking for. What I can say about- God, I love the sound so much. The sound design is out of control in this movie, dude. This moment is how I was absolutely uh, pleased with the sound design. It was important for me that the, the worm will not express itself like some kind of ancient dinosaurs or some kind of monster, but that the sound that it will emulate will be inspired by the friction of such a beast in the, uh, against the rock and the sand, you will feel almost like it's a bending building against the wind or something. The sound of a lake, frozen lake in winter in Canada, where you have like those eerie, incredible singing sound that 
I feel absolutely surreal. And I wanted to convey that kind of where I can't believe the best movie of the year came out in the beginning of the year. I mean, I can. I feel like, I feel like <laughs> checks out. <coughs> Nature. Dude, I feel like goes whenever Dune Three comes out, it's the, sound the best that is movie of the year. Unpredictable. That feels very grand. Seems like you love the VFX and sound, but the story itself was meh. Wait, what? I never. What would lead you to believe that? <laughs> I think it may be talking about me, but I think the story is great. It's just the. I think the only thing I don't like about it. Is like I would love to watch the first book in one movie. You know, I don't think you can just like fit all of that, especially because well, like can't. the first movie needs to set the lore and the universe, describe the different faction, different interests, like at play. So it's just like impossible to fit into one movie, which I think was a major problem with David Lynch is doing as well. It was a six-hour movie, but I mean, like I'd still be down because I didn't want to leave the movie theater. I wanted it to keep going. I was I was content to do another I, I three do, hours. I do know what you mean by that, though. Yeah, I think, like, I, I don't know. I think you can watch, like, all three when he finishes the trilogy. You can watch all three in, in one row for, like, 12 hours. Yeah. In the reality of the image, but feel still as a, there's a, a, a connection with the surreal. Richard King absolutely nailed that. Oh, yeah. Alejandro Jodorowsky tried to adapt Dune as an 18-hour film. Check the trailer on YouTube. That's another thing that David Lynch also talked about where they, the studio arrived at a runtime for them because like they, they looked and they saw that like the, however long the movie was, David Lynch's movie was, was like the perfect length. So like they wouldn't let him go over. Uh, Jodorowsky's adaptation of Dune was such Eight a hours. massive failure, obviously, that there was a documentary <laughs> made about him trying to make this thing and, and failing to do so that, that basically uh that that uh i think the the documentary won an award too i think the idea was to convey the idea that paul God, missed it look at that shot the worm is not exactly where paul oh, intended it to be there's like a, a gap between his position and the worm and that for to increase the fact that he's learning he's about to miss his uber uh, technically the relationship that uh, in the subconscious that it brings with that created according to the right sunlight. This is real until here, Jesus. of course. The idea here is that made, made San Dune, and there is uh, after that an ex set extension where the. I like Villeneuve's Dune, but it is cool, but his style is so bland. It's like really well made blandness. That's insane, dude. Yeah, that's it, a crazy take. That's, <laughs> that is so. I think, dude, I what think, the fuck? I think Oops Lazy might be just saying that because it's probably the complete opposite of blandness it might be the least bland thing i have I, I ever seen in are, my life i think people are so they're just contrarian they want to be like <laughs> they want to just say like something that people are appreciating sucks but i but i kind of fundamentally could understand this it, video is that it's so far in the world of not bland that people could think it is bland because it's yeah, so no, well I done. Think, yeah, they no, it's minimalist and i think that they see yeah, brutalist they see they see negative space and they go uh-uh I don't like it. I mean, dude, Dune is kind of just like pushing Playboy Cardi further into the world of, you know, Balenciaga and all of these clothing lines just being incredibly popularized with like minimalism, br brutalism. <laughs> uh, which I think is absolutely nightmarish uh, event. Dude, the amount and of that, work I, that I was goes trying into to this one do fucking with, uh, scene. Holy as shit. much realism as possible. When the trucks. That's move forward crazy. one after the other and after they were moving in a in a certain order uh, they were not moving all in the same time but with a, a split second each, each other so the collapse was progressive 2093 is the soundtrack for dune 2 is this gonna be pretty? ladies and gentlemen of the gal you asshole <laughs> you're a dick that's it. I'm I'm hitting one of my regulators in the Discord with a fucking Boom. one day ban, dude. Perma. Fuck you. Once the tube were gone, the I, it was it was a long time coming. Okay. <laughs> the stuntman was landing on mattress uh, that were hidden uh, under the 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 sand. Quite simple in theory, uh, but it was difficult in practice because I wanted again to shoot that all in, uh, under natural light. 
I ask my uh, production designer <laughs> to create Man, a gigantic platform, a reproduction. Hey, we yeah, try to build the biggest platform light, possible with the sandworm skin. <laughs> this platform will be on a gimbal. That's crazy. It's a machine that allows us to move the platform in uh, uh, one way. It was a TikTok bait edit. It's all right. Okay. The band still holds. Or the other. The platform can modulate like that at different speed. It's something that is used uh, action sequences in the, in an airplane or sometimes for uh, car accidents or things like that. But this time it was like a specific one that could move quite faster, and uh, it uh, it uh, it required a lot of engineering from uh, Gerd Nefzer, which is Gerd one Nefzer? of the best in the business uh, regarding uh, special effects. What, the way we did that is that we had like what they call the dog collar, and the gimbal was like here. And this was oriented according to sunlight. We were shooting each shot at specific moment of the day when the sun was specifically in the right direction. Each shot needed a specific programming in the platform to convey different moment of the worm ride. That was like a, one of the approach. The other one was on the building of the sound stage, we put the platform at different angles like that when the character is falling. We had also one platform that was like vertical like that with the gimbal that was used for the shot you're seeing here where I wanted the character to lose contact with the platform, like as he, if he was, the platform was falling in order to do so, the platform goes from this to this angle, so the character will fall into the worm. And it's like a, a game with gravity that I was very excited to do, but that uh, required uh, uh, my crew to work uh, many days in order to find the right speed and, and uh, the right angle. As edgy, as real, it will uh, look dangerous, but also uh, some kind of a, a feeling of heroism. And despite his clumsiness, that Paul will succeed. Finally, being one with the desert, that's this idea that Fremen have the ability to uh, be in total harmony with the desert. And that it's like uh, uh, humans finding the right balance. This is why it's ridiculous. Uh, this is why it's ridiculous when motherfuckers are like, oh, AI is going to make movies now. Yeah, it's I, was, like, Dude, I, think I just about read that. a note. I read that note and I was like, good point. You know, yeah. you have a, a cheaper movie and an infinitely better movie with just way better art. Like, there's just no way. Like, the amount of work, the amount of thought, the amount of, like, manpower that goes into, like, making that scene work is crazy. Like, there's no... I don't believe that, like... Like, I do believe that AI is, is, is definitely going to become more and more prominent as a tool that eliminates some aspects, some of the tedious aspects of the process, the creative process, in a complementary way, as it is already in, like, Photoshop and whatnot. But to Maybe. think that this will be, like, to think mm -hmm. that this will replace, like, all of the all of the creative brain power that goes into making every single aspect of this work and the way that it does to make you feel the things that you do feel crazy yeah not in our lifetime probably yeah and if it does then but larry and jihad baby i'm on board <laughs> and and being in one it's a very important moment in the book and it's a fundamental moment in the movie when we designed yeah, the sandworm skin in part one crazy. for patrice velmet <laughs> my production designer and i it was important that the sandworm will feel prehistoric like that uh, all the design of the worm uh, will be in direct relationship with his environment, a bit like uh, the way the novel was uh, was uh, uh, written, that you could explain. Why is the term never? AI does not have to understand all these intricacies to replicate it, but that's all it will do, replicate things from a vast data set? Because it, it's, it's, not, it's not human. It, will, it can't be human. Like, the imperfections is what makes uh, art great in many ways this is not how it worked there was this documentary i, I watched about uh you know go like the chinese board game uh yeah so it, it's called like alpha go this documentary and essentially what they did is they played or the, they coded this go player which is just like the robot and then they brought the best go players in to play and they're like iq is so high like they're arguably some of the smartest people in the world and the basis is is in a moment when they were the robot was playing against the smartest player in the world the they the robot made an actual error like a human error is what they noticed and this was six years ago uh-huh and 
so like the, the I guess the basis of what their argument was is like AI can mess up. And if AI yeah, it's, I think it's called hallucination when like chat GPT does it, even though it's like not even I mean, it's disputed if it's like even AI to begin with or rather just like machine learning, I guess. But yeah, the AI clapped him. But it's just interesting because it's a, yeah, it was like a Google documentary funded by Google. It's really, really well done, actually. But the worm skin felt a bit weird to me. It feels like it should have been smooth with how much friction there is with the sand. Look, man, your worm skin might be smooth. Paul's worm skin, not smooth. When mm -hmm. AI makes too many teeth, is a mistake. But when the human does it, it's art. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uncut worm. Explain uh, from this biology how it feeds, how it evolves, how, how it lives under such ar uh, harsh conditions. And, and it's a beast, technically, that lives, lives under the sand at, at tremendous heat. And, and it's like uh, we try to create the most believable uh, being uh, as possible, still having that kind of godlike quality to it that is so important for the Fremen psyche. In the book, we understand that a Fremen can ride a worm by exposing a sensitive part of its skin. The, the worm has like some scales. Uh, and when you lift one of them, you expose sensitive skin. The, the plates were shot with helicopters, mm. but the, the character actually is shot with a long lens and a, a rig that goes at high speed in order to feel that instability on the character as if he was passing by. There's like a, a really precise nice. shift where we see that uh, it will go from Paul being celebrated by the Fremen because he succeeded, obviously, but we will see from Shani's perspective, the Fremen will go from celebration to adoration. When I, uh, I decided to make this adaptation of the novel, the first artist that I approached to help me to do so was Hans Zimmer. Hans is like me, a massive fan of the novel. Hans gave me a warning, is it, is it a good idea to tackle your childhood dreams? Are we meant to fail? You cannot bring to the screen the full potential of dude, the dream of the teenager. Who talks the like that, bro? Dude. Real geniuses, yeah, dude. Yeah, you've never had a line like that in your life. I haven't, I'm saying. Like, no, dude, I mean, I'm a moron. <laughs> <laughs> like, most I said, is it a good idea to tackle your dreams like of your childhood? It's well, like, you know, he's probably broken English. He's probably, he's like German, I, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's probably like, tackle dreams. Should we? Like, that's an insane, like, who the f what? I I've never met a motherfucker that speaks like that in my life. I, I feel like, I feel like there's one dude, what's his name? Uh, oh, the, su the super gray haired, big bearded, Music guy, um, Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's that guy's a genius. <sighs> um, but I don't know. I mean, I feel like Hans Zimmer is like, almost objectively maybe the best score and artist of our generation. I don't really know. He's yeah.